Hi, my name is Ray, and this is Ray Whippy Creations. In this video, we're going to be making 3D wooden puzzles. So stay tuned to see whether it came together, or simply went to pieces. I'm still testing the capability of the Auto YRR 2.0 device, a Y-axis roller accessory that I think is a must-have for wood turners. I've integrated it with my Niji 3 Max and E40 laser. You can see the initial review project in this link. But in this video, I'm getting excited to test whether it can produce 3D puzzles. I am wood turning hollow cylinders from spruce and oak, and I'm going to test a couple of different wall thicknesses. Now, if you don't have the ability to wood turn cylinders, then you can either buy them, and trust me, if these ideas take off, they'll be more available on the market in due course, or you can befriend a wood turner. And they are wonderful people, and only too happy to help. Well, that's certainly been my experience in the Sussex County area of England, and also on YouTube. Although this video is currently showing a general approach to turning spruce into a hollow cylinder, and this was used for the first prototype, I then used an oak piece with a wall thickness of about 4mm. The type of wood will obviously affect the laser cutting process. But for the auto rollers, you do need to think about the stability of the cylinder under rotation and also air assist. So I think it's about a 5mm thick base to the hollow cylinder. I am not paid to review any of these products, so I can honestly say what I think about them. Light burn, I think, is invaluable. Yes, there is laser durable and also Nietzsche's own software, but light burn for me is far more capable for the type of projects I have in mind. For this cylinder, I used a scene from ET. The length of the image has to match the circumference of the cylinder, and naturally the height of the image has to fit on the cylinder itself. Engraving was done with the Niji E40 laser module, and the main thing to remember here is to ensure that the scan angle is parallel to the x-axis. Assuming you have tested the engraving settings on a separate piece of wood, then you're ready to go. Engraving wraparound cylinder images is fairly straightforward, but having a seamless image is slightly more tricky. I'm sure in an image editor you could fade to black at the edges for continuity, or at least reduce the sudden transition across the scene. And that was pretty good. I went to the puzzle.telegnon.org website, and I'm sure there are others out there, but this was so simple to design a puzzle layout. I wanted an 8x3 format with the length matching the circumference of the cylinder. The thing to remember is that this is about the technique of making the 3D puzzle and not the difficulty of the puzzle itself. That'll come in time. The pieces had wavy lines and I wanted straight lines to simplify the cutting process. So I drew straight lines where they were needed. I extended the horizontal lines, so if the cut did come up short, there'd be a small overlap across the seam. I deleted the left-hand side of the puzzle, because there's no point cutting this line twice, as it's going to be part of the other side of the image when it wrapped around the cylinder. I imported the image into Inkscape to generate the path. So briefly, we click on the path and then trace bitmap, and in the Options tab, select Centerline Tracing under Detection Mode. Hit Apply, then switch to Edit Paths by Nodes, and you should see the centerline trace. Save it as a plain SVG, then head over to Lightburn. In Lightburn, you can import the centerline trace SVG file. Then you can hide the image portion, leaving only the path which the laser is going to cut along. You can then rotate and resize the jigsaw cut to fit your image. One of the main things to remember is not to forget that the tabs may extend beyond the image. And it's the straight sides of the puzzle pieces and not the tabs themselves that will align to the image top and bottom. Select the settings to suit your laser module and the wood, and then get cutting. Typically, I use 200mm a minute, 90% power, constant mode enabled, air assist, and two passes. For an oak cylinder with 4mm wall thickness, it should have been easy enough to cut straight through. 
but I think there are some minor issues that also affected the cutting process. The grain density varies around the oak piece. This is English oak, and the grain direction probably is more wavy than I needed it to be. And the accuracy of the auto rollers is not always spot on, so it had cut right next to the previous cut on more than one occasion. And you'll notice a number of trend lines in the final images. One thing I forgot to do was to set tabs or bridges automatically in Lightburn to keep the pieces in place, and one did dislodge. One careful extraction later, and then we're good to go. For the next attempt, I'm using spruce with a thicker wall of 10 millimeters. Now mainly this is because the final jigsaw with four millimeter pieces was loose and flimsy and very difficult to stay together. So a thicker wall would overcome this problem, but it actually generates another. But hey, that's why we're here to test these ideas. I chose a different image, aligned it to the cutting area, and totally forgot that this was spruce and not oak, so I should have lowered the power of the engraving process. The engraving of this cylinder, which was 80 millimeters in diameter, so around 250 millimeters in circumference, it took about 40 minutes, and I'm definitely interested in getting a quicker system. Niji are to bring out their 4 max system with an E80 laser module, and that should be fairly soon, which I hope will be a big increase in performance. Anyway, the engraving is straightforward, the jigsaw pattern was set up in Lightburn, and then the cutting can commence. In cutting through cylinders, you're going to want to block the rest of the laser beam from hitting the inside surface. So I've got a rod that's affixed, or at least suspended, inside the cavity of the cylinder. The jigsaw cut is complete, and the pattern is fairly close to what it should be. Again, I think a chuck-based system will be far more accurate than the rollers for this kind of work. Auto do have a chuck system, which is more suited to wood turners, I think, and something I really want to try out. I remembered to generate the tabs, but should have ensured that they were placed away from the jigsaw tabs. Anyway, most came apart easily, but some required a bit of persuasion. There is an issue with rotary cutting a jigsaw puzzle, and that is that the tabs and holes are aligned to the central axis of the cylinder. Naturally, of course. So that means that the tab and holes are wider at the top than the bottom. They're in a conical shape. So the tab has to be inserted into the hole from on top. And this can cause some major headaches when assembling the jigsaw puzzle in 3D. You're going to have to try it to believe it. The final images of the 3D jigsaw puzzles. The 4mm oak cylinder was loose and difficult to keep the pieces in place but at least it was easy enough to bring the pieces together. I managed to at least get the engraving right, so I'm happy with that. The 10mm spruce had more tram lines due to inaccurate rollering, but the pieces at least did stay together, though much harder to assemble. I'm not sure if the difficulty in physically assembling the pieces is the truly appealing part of a jigsaw puzzle but there is a better way to make a 3D wooden jigsaw puzzle with tighter fitting pieces and where you don't have to wrestle so much. Except with the solving, of course. Now this is a project I'm working on and hopefully will be out soon. Please stay watching to see me solve this jigsaw puzzle. I forgot to print off a copy of the image, but 24 pieces should not have been a challenge. Except it was, and took me 15 minutes to finish it. By way of final remarks, let me say that the auto rotary rollers are a great accessory and worth it even if it's only to play with. 
though a more accurate system would be better. The Niji E40 and the 3 Max were reliable for engraving and cutting, and I'm very happy with the system. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching through to the end. Please let me know what you think of the project in the comments below. Your feedback can be of tremendous help. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and also hit that bell notification. I do hope you'll come back, so I'll catch you next time. Take care.